There is this viral image that gets shared all the time. It basically compares Quaker oats made in the US versus the UK, with the overall point being like, see, look how much American food is just filled with chemicals. Now, originally this image was shared by Food Babe, and every single time I see it, it just drives me absolutely bonkers. Because here's the thing, this isn't even the right or a fair comparison. The US product is berries and cream, and the UK one is just berries. They're different products, so of course they're going to have different ingredients on their label. So yeah, the American Quaker Oats ingredient statement is longer in this case. That doesn't mean it's poison. It's simply just a different product. But the bigger issue is what this image represents. It gives Americans this false sense of comfort that if only we were able to get these bad ingredients, these chemicals, out of our soup food supply and copy what Europe is doing, Americans would be a lot thinner and healthier. But I really don't think this is the case at all. It's just not that simple. As an American who lived in Europe for two years, I can tell you it's not the chemicals. In fact, the real reasons will make you much more uncomfortable and will be way harder to fix. Okay, we have to start with portion sizes because this absolutely blew my mind when I moved to Europe. But before that, I just want to be clear, I'm saying this as an American, as someone who grew up with the same eating habits, the same thoughts about food as any other American, because what I've noticed is you think everything is normal, you think that's just the way everyone does it, until you're older and you move away and you see, okay, it actually could be done differently. In the US, what an American thinks is one portion often is actually two to three servings. We've completely lost a clue of what a reasonable amount of food is. Here's a great example. In the US, if a cookie comes as like one cookie, like one piece, Americans typically assume because it's one piece, it's one per portion, right? Or if you get like a soda or an energy drink, if it's one bottle, we assume, well, that has to be one portion. Why else would it be one in that package? But in Europe, it's the opposite. Uh, European sees like a huge cookie being sold that's like as big as your head. And their first thought is like, obviously this is to be shared with like four or five of my friends. It's a completely different mindset and it matters because we tend to eat whatever is put in front of us. So I noticed when I first moved to Europe, I was like, whoa, these portion sizes are so small. Like I'm going to be so hungry. But after a month or so you adjust, like I stopped thinking everything was such a small portion size because in the end I would eat what was ever on my plate. Like in the US when I had a heaping plate of food, I ate way more calories because it was sitting right in front of me. But in Europe, when I was served a lot less, I ate a lot less, right? And it wasn't like a difference in satisfaction at all. Your body tends to adjust to what the normal portion size is. I always hear Americans say, the food in Europe is so much fresher. It always tasted better, you know, once they get home from a long European vacation. But honestly, I don't really think that's true. Really, the difference is how often people go buy their food. The food supply itself is not somehow magically more fresh. When I lived in the Netherlands, I noticed that people grocery shopped way more frequently, like maybe three or four times a week, sometimes even daily. Like it would be very normal that most days after work, someone hopped on their bicycle and on their way home, they stopped at the grocery store just to pick up the ingredients they needed to make for like dinner that night. Compare that to Americans or people in the US where you really do maybe one big shopping trip on the weekend, like you stack up and you expect that 
food to be good for at least a week. Like we really plan our meals in advance. So while the food isn't necessarily fresher, there is a faster turner burn, both at you know the fridge within houses, but also at the grocery store. Europeans don't just let their food sit around, you know, in their home for as long as an American typically would. So I could see this result in, you know, meals do seem fresher, or it seems like restaurants have fresher food. But really, the food starts out as the same quality, but the longer Americans let it sit, of course, it isn't as fresh. So it's not that Europeans have access to better food. It's really about how food fits into their daily life and the rhythm of their daily life. I will never forget this moment. So I was having dinner with my Dutch neighbors and they're really excited. They told me it's a special night, so they are going to make a dessert after dinner. Now, as an American, I'm thinking something like cake or pie, like something really indulgent. Do you want to guess what dessert was? Yogurt with fruit and like a sprinkle, just a little sprinkle of homemade granola. To a Dutch person, that is a dessert, a sweet treat, a sweet end to a meal. But you know what an American would consider that food? That's a healthy breakfast. Same food, but you know, looked at totally differently. And that wasn't just a one-off. I lived like one floor below a Dutch family and they had a little girl. She was about three at the time. And I noticed when she asked for a snack, the foods she was offered, basically the only foods were a couple of cherry tomatoes, an apple, maybe an orange. Um, like she, there was no like goldfish, crackers, chips, pouch, none of that. That wasn't even actually in the house or it wasn't an option. When she wanted a snack, she would go to the fruit bowl on the table and that's really all that was offered. That's what I mean. There's just this like different perception of health. Like it's, it's how we see food differently in different cultures. So, you know, yogurt wasn't like, you know, low cal or high protein. It was like a sweet, creamy treat. And tomatoes aren't a vegetable, you know, you have to hide in a pasta sauce. It's, it's all just food. It's a totally different mindset. Speaking of what counts as a snack, we have to talk about the processed food in American diets. Now, full transparency, I'm not someone who thinks processing is automatically bad. Where I think Americans go wrong is the large amount of processed foods that is now in their diets. And here's a memory that really stuck with me. I was house sitting once for my Dutch neighbors and of course I got hungry. I want a snack or something, you know, easy to eat. So I start like scrounging through their kitchen, opening their cabinets, you know, is there, you know, a, a treat, a snack, you know, something, something quick, but you know, tastes good. And guys, there was nothing. No chocolate, no chips, no boxed mac and cheese, no instant ramen. None of the convenient staples I would have found in an American pantry. And that's the thing. Europeans don't keep this like stockpile of convenience foods where Americans, we have like a whole shelf in the pantry of, you know, snacks just in case I get hungry. But if you're anything like me and there's something indulgent like candy or chips in the house, I'm going to eat it. Like I just have no self-control when it comes to that stuff. So I think Americans, by how they stock their kitchen and their pantry, they have this temptation every day, whereas Europeans totally avoid this temptation because they're surrounded by a different environment. There's just not those sweets and treats right at hand. So far, I've mostly been focusing on food, you know, portion sizes, processed food, how we grocery shop, but I think I would be missing a huge piece of the puzzle if I didn't talk about lifestyle. So for example, when I lived in the Netherlands for two years, I never drove a car anywhere. Usually I either biked or walked wherever I needed to go. I also wasn't glued to my desk for over eight hours a day. I wasn't clocking in to work 60 hour weeks anymore. And I definitely was not working weekends. I basically biked everywhere to the grocery store, to friends' houses, to any activity. 
even at work, the culture was different. People took real breaks, like in the morning and the afternoon and at lunch. No one glorified like overworking, working 60 plus hours a week, just be glued to your desk. When we would take a break, you might go walk outside, take a stroll around the building. You would eat lunch with your friends and coworkers. It was totally, totally different. Movement wasn't something you had to schedule for gym time. It was more like baked into your workday. And I think that really adds up. In the US, so much of our life is, you know, based around efficiency and convenience. It's drive there, sit here, rush through everything. Whereas in Europe, like daily movement is more baked into life. It's not that you have to go to the gym at a specific time to be fit. It's just within the daily routine. So yeah, I don't think it's the chemicals in foods that are making Americans unhealthy. It's what we choose to eat, how much of it we eat, how we grocery shop, and how we live our broader life. If you enjoyed this video, next I would recommend my video that explains your food is packed with chemicals and that's okay.